Um, so I'm going to give um, an overview of the current National Hydromorphology Work Programme, um, the recently developed hydromorphological assessment tool, um, and then I'll talk a bit about how the tool can link in with activities such as um, river restoration. So many of you would be familiar with the term hydromorphology. Uh, for those that are not, it's simply the physical conditions of a water body. And along with ecology and water quality, it's the vital component of catchment management. Hydromorphology is a water framework directive term that stems from the discipline fluvial geomorphology. And that's the study of the processes that operate in um, a water body. So that would be water and sediment production and movement and the features that these processes produce. So the likes of your riffles and pools. Um, the reason why hydromorphology is very important for catchment management um, is because it's the foundation for which aquatic ecosystems can be supported. So your processes are creating and maintaining habitat. So what do we consider when we're uh, thinking about hydromorphology? Well, we're thinking of things like flow. We're thinking about longitudinal connectivity. So that's the movement of water and sediment along the channel, but also we're considering fish migration. We're also considering things like lateral connectivity. So that's the interaction of the channel with the river corridor or perhaps um, the floodplain, and then the channel's ability to move within its floodplain. We're also considering um, channel depth and width. So these are your channel dimensions. And quite often activities like dredging can impact those dimensions and in turn can have, um, can have um, or can impact flow and sediment regimes. We also consider the likes of sediment. So perhaps looking at the distribution of sediment. So your boulders, your cobbles, sand, silt and clay. And we're looking at riparian vegetation. So you can see here that we have an example of uh, native trees coming right down to the river bank, interacting with the channel, um, stabilizing the banks and providing shade and habitat. So here's the risk assessment outcome for the second cycle of the Water Framework Directive. And we have a list of significant pressures. Um, you can see that hydromorphological pressures or physical modification are the second most significant um, pressure group. And those pressures would include things like channelization, barriers such as culverts and weirs, and then in structures impeding lateral connectivity. Hydromorphological status is only considered for high status sites and water bodies. And we use a physical habitat assessment called RAT. Uh, to address that. But for characterization and hydromorphology, um, we um, are considering all water bodies. And we're asking questions like, in the case of rivers, how does the river physically function? How does it respond to pressures? Is there a significant issue? And we address these questions at multiple scales. And coming into cycle three, we now have assessment tools to, to address these questions at these, at these multiple scales. The National Hydromorphology Work Programme, um, this is outlined in the River Basin Management Plan for 2018 to 2021. You can see that there are nine steps. And this plan ties in with the Department of Housing, Planning and Local Government's ultimate goal of having a statutory control regime in place to manage physical modification. But we need to address these steps first. So you can see in the first step, um, improved knowledge of hydromorphology ecology relationships. And the quantitative link is quite weak, um, not just here, but everywhere. So this is something that needs to be addressed. Step two and three, um, developing and implementing hydromorphological condition assessment tools. These are uh, priority steps, uh, particularly for the EPA at the moment. And you can see that we're building up our hydromorphology toolbox. We now have um, assessments to look at flows such as CUBE. We have physical habitat assessment surveys like RAT, 
we have hydromorphological condition assessment tools for rivers, such as MQI Ireland. For transitional and coastal water bodies, we have track HQI. For lakes, we have Lake Mimas. And then Inland Fisheries Ireland uh, have developed and implemented um, a fish barrier tool. So these tools will um, provide the evidence and provide a baseline to address all the remaining steps, such as reviewing heavily modified water body designations, developing key hydromorphological indicators, so either within the tools themselves or um, outside those tools, so field-based indicators uh, such as to deal with fine sediment, identify appropriate restoration measures and develop, agree a prioritized restoration program, develop environmental quality standards and adapt tools for assessing impacts of proposed developments. And all uh, this program is supported by the National Hydromorphology Working Group. So to give an example of a tool from step two and three, um, so developing and implementing hydromorphological condition assessment tools, we have the MQI Ireland tool for rivers. So this is carried out at a national level. It's desk-based and it provides a national overview of hydromorphological condition for rivers and it allows for the targeting of areas for further investigation and mitigation. And you can see that we have assessed 60,000 kilometers of river channel. And we look, when we look at the percentage of channel length, we can see that a third of the channel is less than good hydromorphological condition. And then when you look at the map, um, you can make out patterns of drainage schemes and, and urban areas. There's four steps to the MQI Ireland tool. The first step um, is about breaking up the river network into sections or reaches. So those reaches would ideally be between one and 10 kilometers. Um, and that considers a landscape unit. It can consider confinement. So that's the, the presence and the position of the channel within a floodplain and channel patterns. So is the channel straight? Is it sinuous? Is it meandering? The next step looks at capturing hydromorphological feature data. And that involves either extracting uh, spatial data from uh, third parties or manually digitizing where data is not available. And then with that data, we generate indicators considering longitudinal connectivity, lateral connectivity, channel morphology and riparian vegetation condition. And then those indicators are combined to get an overall condition assessment score and hydromorphological class. The MQI Ireland tool has 15 indicators. We have four indicators looking at longitudinal connectivity. So that's the movement of uh, water and sediment along the channel. We have four indicators looking at lateral connectivity. So that's looking at activities outside the channel. So as an example, we have an indicator looking at uh, river corridor connectivity. So that's looking at the de um, development or hard surfaces such as roads and buildings within the river corridor. We have five indicators looking at channel morphology. So that's looking at the activities within the channel itself. And as an example, we have an indicator looking at artificial changes of the river course. So that's looking at the likes of drainage schemes, but also looking at channel modification based on differences between current aerial imagery and also historic um, imagery such as Cassini six inch map. And then we have two indicators looking at riparian vegetation condition. And as the MQI Ireland tool is carried out at a national level, we had to take um, an automated approach to generate these indicators. And you can see that they're categorized by level of impact, high, medium, low. So we have a traffic light system you can see in the map. And the level of impact represents the degree of change from natural hydromorphological condition. The indicator scores are based on continuous variables, so we can see changes no matter how subtle. And this will aid scenario analysis, particularly when we're looking at the impact from proposed development, but also looking at um, river restoration. 
So for the condition assessment, here we have an example of a two kilometre river reach. And you can see that there has been um, channel ma maintenance. So you can see that vegetation has been removed from the bank face and the bank top. And when we look at the indicators, um, combine those indicators together, we get an overall hydromorphological condition class of moderate. And if we want to see, well, how is the river functioning? Why is it at this moderate um, condition? You can see that the channel morphology and riparian condition indicators are driving this moderate class. And if we wanna go one step further and look at measures, to improve the condition of the reach. Some examples of pressures could be cease dredging, ensure best practice in channel drainage maintenance, or perhaps reestablish or prevent removal of riparian vegetation on the bank. And we always have to think of multiple benefits when we're thinking about river restoration. So for example, for riparian vegetation, this can improve hydromorphological condition. It can improve biodiversity. But if there's delivery points for critical source areas along this reach, riparian vegetation can intercept pollutants or it can act as a natural water retention measure. And for this year, we have just been um, continuing to refine and review um, tool output. And this involved validation through case studies, working with external specialists, and then just considering you know, the best available data and how we can improve future iterations. So coming back to the National Hydromorphology Work Program, um, and to reiterate how the MQI Ireland tool, but also other tools can support this program, um, we can see for the first step, multiple tools can help explore linkages between ecology and hydromorphology. We are already using the MQI Ireland tool to support WFT characterization and to inform the revision of heavily modified water body designation. Tools can help support identification of hydromorphological indicators and monitoring programs, support the targeting and identification of appropriate hydromorphological measures, support the development of environmental quality standards and in time of a regulatory framework. And particularly for the MQI Ireland tool, as it's reviewed and, and refined, it can act as the basis for a decision support system. But to come back to step six and seven, um, appropriate hydromorphological measures. So that's really important. It's all about the right measure in the right place. And appropriate meaning that, you know, measures can facilitate natural processes, that they consider catchment scale, that multiple benefits are considered, a multidisciplinary approach is taken, um, and multiple stakeholders are included. And the remaining presentations for um, this session are really, really interesting, and they'll touch on those important factors. So if anyone has any questions about this presentation, um, please use the conference app. Thank you.